Hi, Arte friends. Welcome to Classics and Kelly, your weekly dive into some of the ancient world's wackiest facts. I'm Mark Graves, and I'm so excited to be able to talk to you today about analog computing devices from Greece and Rome. And to make that a little more succinct and clickbaity, let's simplify that to computers in the ancient world. So some of these devices I am betting that you're already at least somewhat familiar with. For example, an abacus, right? You've probably seen those, maybe you played around with swiping the beads. It's pretty cool. The Romans actually had a slightly different version of this called a calculi. So instead of having a bead that would go up and down a rod, and I mean this in the least sexual way possible, the calculi was actually just sort of a flat board with grooves in it and you could slide pebbles up and down. So it's the same function, the same basic principle, just slightly different construction. What I actually really love about the calculi is its name. So in English, that word has evolved into meaning things like calculus and calculate, so really heavy brain hurdy types of things. But originally, all it meant was just the diminutive of the Latin word for rock. So it's like rocky or itty bitty rock, little baby rock, little pebble, that kind of thing. And they would use these little rocks for all kinds of things. So in voting, you'd throw your little pebble into the pot of the person that you were trying to get elected, or you would use these little pebbles in all kinds of board games, and you would use these pebbles in the calculi, right? These little boards that you could use. So it's a very simple, very everyday type of device, but still very impressive nonetheless. And of course, there is the Antikythera mechanism, which is well beyond my capacity to explain to you in detail. There are much better resources out there for you, but I also can't make a video about ancient computers and not mention it at all. So very briefly, this is a device that was found in a shipwreck in the Mediterranean, and it's made of these little metal gears that are very precise, very complicated. They fit together just so, and it's basically an analog computer device that could predict things like eclipses, the movements of planets and stars, and it was used for astronomy and also for navigation at sea. So it's just an incredibly complex and impressive device, which again, I cannot explain to you. So if you have somehow not heard of it before, please pause this video and go find one about that. However, I'm hoping that this next device that I'm gonna focus the rest of the video on is one that you have not heard of before because I had no idea it existed until like a week ago when I ran into it and I wrote the script. So it's called a hedometer or a taximeter and it's basically the ancestor of the odometer that you now have running around in your car. So it just tells you about how far you've gone. And it doesn't sound like rocket science or anything, but when you look into the particulars of how this thing works, it's actually surprisingly and impressively complex. So we don't really know the origins of this thing. One theory is that it was invented by Archimedes of Syracuse. So he was a real guy. He was a real brainiac inventor, famous for being smart and building things. And as his name implies, he lived in Syracuse, but specifically he lived in Syracuse while it was allies with young Rome. So Rome was starting to expand and just starting to build the complex network of roads across Italy that it is now so famous for. So the theory is that the Romans recruited Archimedes to come build this device for them so that they could have accurate milestones set up all along all of these miles of roads that they were building. Of course, as always, we have absolutely no proof of any of this. <laughs> so some people argue that there must have been some form of odometer hundreds of years before Archimedes. So people will point out that there are these passages from ancient histories that describe Alexander the Great's expeditions through India. And in these histories, they'll give very, very detailed, precise measurements between cities, between landmarks, etc. And if you go check them now, they are shockingly accurate. They're not perfect, but they're very, very close, closer than you would think ancient people would be able to get. And so people have theorized that they had some kind of device that would do this for them, which is perfectly reasonable and possible. The counter argument is that these same histories also state that Alexander took with him Bemetis, and Bemetis are professional step counters, basically. So they are hired to walk along very carefully next to the military as they're marching along and to count every single step. And that way the generals have a general idea of how far they've come. And I'm assuming so the cartographers can start to put together accurate maps. Uh, so this was like a real profession that people in the ancient world apparently had. And you could argue, well, how could they possibly get 
that precise of measurements just with their feet walking around. And that's a fair criticism, but people in the ancient world are constantly surprising us with the crazy things that they were able to do with crazily simple technology. So personally, I could be convinced either way that there was already odometers around at this point in time or that they weren't invented until much later. Regardless of when it was invented or by whom it was invented, it's still a ridiculously impressive piece of technology. And fortunately for us, we have a passage that describes it in detail. So this comes from Vitruvius. He's a scientific technical writer. He's most famous for describing Roman architecture. So he gives us a passage that goes into a lot of detail, all the little itty bitty measurements of all the different pieces and how they fit together and how they work. And sadly, I don't think I can get away with reading the whole thing on a YouTube video. I think most of you would fall asleep. If you are really interested in this, then please go read the whole thing. I'm just going to read some bits of it, starting with the first paragraph. Our next specification concerns a contrivance not without its uses, which we owe to the great skill of our predecessors. By this contrivance, whether we travel on land in a four-wheel carriage or by sea in a ship, we can learn how many miles we have covered. It is as follows. The wheels of the carriage are to be four feet in diameter, and one wheel a point is to be marked. When the wheel begins to move forward from this point and to revolve on the road surface, it will have completed a distance of 12 and a half feet on arriving at the point from which it began its revolution. So I owe all of you an apology and I have to say that I am very sorry because the best summary that I could find of this very detailed, very technical passage was actually just on Wikipedia. So I'm just gonna read a paragraph from Wikipedia to you all. And again, <laughs> I'm so sorry. The odometer of Vitruvius was based on chariot wheels of four Roman feet diameter, turning 400 times in one Roman mile. For each revolution, a pin on the axle engaged a 400 tooth cog wheel, thus turning it one complete revolution per mile. This engaged another gear with holes along the circumference where pebbles, those calculi coming in again, were located that were to drop one by one into a box. The distance traveled would thus be given simply by counting the number of pebbles. So again, it's a relatively simple device, but still very clever. And it was actually adapted to also be used for ships. So let's go back to Vitruvius to read about that. When therefore the ship receives an impulse from the force of the oars or the sails, the paddles fixed to the wheels touch the water which meets them and being urged by a strong backward impulse, turn the wheels. These in turn move the axle by their revolutions and the axle moves the drum. The tooth of which being driven around strikes at each revolution a single tooth of the second drum and produces the corresponding rotations. Thus, when the wheels have been made to revolve 400 times by the paddles, the drum, being once driven round, will strike by the tooth placed on its side a tooth in the horizontal drum. Therefore, as often as the revolution of the horizontal drum brings the stones to the opening, it will let them drop through the small channel. And in this way, by the sound and number of the stones, it will indicate the miles traversed by the ship. Unfortunately, this incredible device does not seem to have been used through the Middle Ages. It looks like it just got lost along the way somewhere. I guess they went back to counting their feet. Then in the Renaissance period, Leonardo da Vinci read this passage by Vitruvius and thought, that sounds awesome. I want to try to build that. And he gave it his best shot, but he couldn't get the gears to quite fit and work properly. So for a while, people wondered if Vitruvius wasn't actually describing a real device that the Romans used regularly. They thought, well, maybe he's just talking about like hypothetically or theoretically, somebody could build something like this. You know, it's more of just like a hypothetical problem. But then in the modern era, there is a gentleman named Andre Sleswick he wrote an article called Vitruvius's Odometer. And he thought, well, what if we took a look at the Antikythera mechanism and we looked at those gears and their proportion and their shape and how they fit together and we used all of that to try to build the description that Vitruvius gives us and it worked. It came out perfectly, it works just fine and therefore it is highly likely that the Romans did actually have this device and did use it on the regular, which is just Wonderful, it makes me so happy. Thank you so much for checking out this video. Special thank you as always to subscribers and to Patreon members, and I hope to see all of you again next week. Carrot